Hello and welcome to this video. Um, I'm doing another one of my informal videos. I'm not, you know, I like formality, but I think with regard to an awful lot of uh, life, we don't need formality. And so I kind of refuse to do these, you know, wonderful intros for 30 seconds and then, you know, the build up towards uh, a sort of a little mini mini production for something um, to me that's not that important I prefer to I, I'm the same I'm not that impressed by a lot of videos uh, I'm more interested in in the content um, today I'd like to talk about mindfulness um, it's a word that gets banded around quite a lot I think it's overused in a lot of places. Um, it's become a buzzword, in my opinion. It's become the selling point for a lot of things. And, and I've had people randomly just say to me, you know, do I practice mindfulness? And I'm, it kind of, when, the last time I got that, I kind of went back home and just sat and thought, why would somebody say something like that? really do i practice mindfulness i in my opinion and there's a million and one opinions around about what mindfulness is and and how one should become mindful of anything i think mindfulness is is such an umbrella term it's a bit like meditation and in fact in my interpretation of mindfulness i think meditation and mindfulness are actually quite linked like a lot of things are in life they're linked together there are gray areas and crossovers and and such like so to me when people start talking about mindfulness i think it's more an awareness uh, and a concentration about something give an example I think of mindfulness at a very, very, you know, minor level, really. Because I think mindfulness, like meditation, can be light, it can be 30 seconds, or it could be two hours. You know, you could go into a really deep meditation, you could have, you know, an out, a sort of a real out-of-body almost experience with med with meditation or you can sit in a chair and literally zone out in a meditative state it's still a meditation for 30 seconds where your mind is cleared and you're focused on nothing to me mindfulness is more it's kind of the same method as meditation but you're focusing on just one thing so you're you're becoming so tuned into that one thing that you're focusing on and I'll give an example very often in life we can we can we, we repeat patterns throughout our life we do things without thinking we do it because we become uh, unconsciously competent about something that we don't really mindfully think about it we don't bring it into our conscious thoughts while we do it uh, people have said many times before you know they've driven from one place to another and and they do that on such a regular basis that sometimes they don't even recognize that time's gone by they don't even recognize how they got from a to b or part of that journey because they've kind of zoned out they've become you know in, they've sort of entered a meditative state where they weren't really consciously aware of what it was they were doing there wasn't any danger in it because your unconscious can take control but to become unconsciously competent with something means that you can do it almost without that forethought without that without bringing it into the into the conscious area of our brain apologies if you can hear a plane we'll just let that pass we won't let it bother us it's going to happen anyway but it, it it's actually quite interesting so to me mindfulness is almost 
entering that state of competence, the unconscious competence about something, but at the same time focusing on the one thing, becoming totally engrossed in the one thing that you're doing. So very often uh, I can give some examples of where I think um, mindfulness can can come in and again you know there is a spectrum I'm going to be touching on just ex some examples of what that could be we eat something as humans pretty much every day we sit down to a meal we may not have even cooked the meal or maybe we did cook the meal maybe we've cooked the meal many many times and we we enter that state of meditation in a way that unconscious competence state where we do something without really thinking we go through we cook the meal, we then sit down for the meal, we then eat the meal, and we may have a, you know, a conversation with family or friends or something. And then you come to the end of that meal and then you, you, know, you wash your dishes or you put your, you know, your dishes into the dishwasher. Um, and, and that whole process has become almost an unconscious competence thing. We've done it without really thinking. We've gone into a state where we have repeated the same process over many thousands of times in our lifetime, where it's just become routine. So in my way of thinking, to translate that into a being in a mindful state would be to bring that unconscious competence, right? Being aware that that's what it is and that's what we're experiencing at any one particular you know point in time and to become consciously aware so we bring it out of unconscious competence and we then bring it into our conscious mind we then hold it there we then become very aware of everything that we're doing the sensations the smells the 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 hearing the the visuals the touch um, and we are experiencing what was an unconscious competence um, experience and we're bringing that into a mindful state one of consciousness one of complete being completely engrossed in what it is we're doing um, I'll give you another example, and it's again just a very, very simple example. And we, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go start talking about real deep stuff here. But I mean, you can just transfer that skill and that, you know, way of thinking into something deeper if you really want to, like the meditation state. Um, but another thing, you know, uh, locking a door when you leave your house, locking the car when, you know, you par you've parked your car and you walk away and you go to wherever it is you're going. Sometimes we can do things like locking a vehicle or locking the house, or shutting a gate. We can walk away and then sort of half an hour later you think, did I really lock my car? Did I, did I forget? Did I really lock my house door? You know, the front door. And we, we have those thoughts because we've, it's been brought into our consciousness and we're questioning our unconscious part of our brain as to whether we really did it or not. And we maybe start to doubt whether we did it or not. So, for things like locking the front door and locking the car, uh, sometimes I think it's actually really useful to, to be mindful of what it is you're actually doing so that you can tell your brain that you have actually really done this. And it's a very simple thing, but you become completely focused on that one process of locking the door. Of, of everything, you know, what you're hearing, what you're smelling, what you're feeling, uh, what you're seeing, um, you know, the actual experience of, of opening the door from the inside and you stepping through the, the, the door 
um, the art, you know, the doorway rather, <laughs> you know, closing the door behind, you're holding the handle, you're pulling, you know, the door towards you and you hear that click, um, or you hear whatever sounds, you know, associated with it, the clunk of the door, um, you know, you can feel the keys in your hand, the metal, you look at, you can see the shininess maybe of the metal, um, you know, you can then focus on the keyhole, the lock that you're going to be putting the key in, if that if that is a, you know a thing, or if you're holding the key fob to lock the car, that you can feel the bumps, you know, the the the, the feel of the remote control, you know, that there are different bumps on a, on a remote control very often for opening and closing, um, you know, that that to me is a level of mindfulness on a on a fairly superficial level, but it takes that concentration, it's bringing something into your consciousness that you're completely and utterly focused on and it, as I said before you know it's it, it is a form of meditation it's a form of I guess thinking meditation <laughs> because you're you're you know you're you're co completely conscious you're almost forcing your brain and all of your senses to focus on what it is you're going to be doing in hand, whether it's closing the door, whether it's eating a meal, whether it's experiencing the air outside, whether you're going to sit down and just listen to the birds. Um, you know, that to me is a form of mindfulness. Having a conversation with someone and to the exclusion of everything else around. Sometimes we listen to people, but we're taking in all the surroundings. You know, we're listening to the TV, we're listening to the kids upstairs, we're listening to the traffic outside, we're listening to next door neighbors talking in the garden. You know, we can hear music in the background. You know, our phone is bleeping and, and, and whatever while we're still listening to our friend or our family member. Um, that's not being mindful, really, in my, in my way of thinking. So being mindful would be to completely focus on what the person is actually saying to you, to the exclusion of everything else. So you try to cut out everything else around and ignore, you know, acknowledge it's there, but it kind of ignore its intrusion into your mindful state, your meditative state while you listen to the person who's talking to you. And so that's my interpretation of mindfulness. Um, you can use, if you like, the mindfulness state in pretty much everything and it changes your outlook on things it changes your perception of what what your mind sometimes takes for granted and does things without thinking the unconscious competence bit and brings it back into consciousness again um, so anyway just wanted to share that today uh, thank you very much for watching and um, I hope to see you again soon in another video.